Welcome to the third part of my four-part um, video diary of, of my trip from Buenos Aires to Cordoba and back by train by one of the few remaining um, long-distance trains out of the many that once were crossing the country east to west and south to north and uh, unfortunately there there are just like three or four long distance lines remaining well uh, that's one of them and this is the the train and it's actually very representative of you know what's happened to the um, to the railway system in the country as you can see you know there it's a it's a beautiful station probably not huge but you know uh, gorgeous with beautiful architecture from you know the golden age of um, of Argentina which is the 90s of the 19th century and probably all the way up to the 20s and maybe early 30s of the 20th century um, well there are just a couple of trains um, here now uh, a couple of regular lines uh, one of them long distance uh, that's the train actually you can already see it there um, well well you can see what 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 condition the the station is in um, in Buenos Aires um, it looked well not really similar but it was really not in the in the best condition but a few years ago um, it was restored beautifully restored um, so all the you know the opulence and you know uh, the the architectural glory um, is is out there so in Buenos Aires the the train station is absolutely beautiful well here I am boarding my train well have already boarded my train it's a sleeping car and um, well uh, we're gonna get into my compartment and these are the people boarding the train the train has the the uh, the, the sleeping car, the only one in the whole train, which they they call coche camarote or camarote, which is compartment. And then there's um, Pullman and third class or tourist or something like that. So basically there are like three classes in it, you know. Um, and it's pretty cheap to travel uh, if you're traveling third class or even Pullman. It's a little bit pricier. But relatively speaking, obviously, um, in dollars, that's still uh, very, very, very reasonable. And like I've mentioned before in my previous video, in case you, you didn't watch it, then I'll just say it again. You're paying for the compartment, not for the bed, not for one seat, okay? So you're paying for the compartment. By default, you know, it's like it's two people traveling. So you can travel with somebody and it's going to be that same price that you're paying because you're buying out the entire compartment meant for two, okay? Well, I traveled alone and, well, that's the train. Um, pretty new cars, like, the you know, they've been in, in use since 2017 or 18, so it's really a new train. Um, I guess uh, manufactured in, in, in China. Well, at least that, that's what I've been told. Here we are about to depart, you know, to, to depart from, uh, from Cordoba, from the Mitra station. These are our attendants. Well, that's my compartment. Well, there are two pillows because technically you're getting two sets of, you know, um, of bedding, sheets and the blankets and the pillows and whatnot. Well, uh, I love, I just love that. People seeing off their family members and friends and that really brings back a lot of wonderful memories of my Russian slash Soviet childhood and the way my, my great aunt and um, or some of her family friends or family members um, would see us off um, at the station and um, sometimes even, you know, walk or run along the platform waving until the train disappeared it was really exactly that what I'm, as i am describing it really well here you know people are obviously <laughs> behind the bars but um well anyway i think it's very sweet it's a sweet moment well you can see that the old signs are there the platform number one 
the box office, the ticket office, um, and well, it says uh, the passageway to platforms two and three. And here we are by Cordoba, beautiful city, definitely going to be back and recommend it to you. I speak at length about Cordoba in the previous video, so check it out if you haven't yet. Um, that was a very short time I spent there, like a day, I guess, 22 hours in that city. But um, it was it was a it was a great stay. I I checked out the major um, sites and landmarks, and I I had um, a wonderful dinner and and breakfast and brunch. And I really, really want to come back one day, just for, not for the sake of the train anymore, but rather just to spend some time in Cordoba and explore the city and the surroundings, which are beautiful. Well, um, this is one of the old trains and the, the color scheme has changed a lot of times throughout the history of Argentinian trains because they were originally um, private, train carriers and they were British and French, well mostly British, and then they, in 1948 they were nationalized by the Peron government and that marked the beginning of the end of Argentinian um, railways. They were um, privatized in the 90s by the MNM government um, and not very successfully and not very um, honestly and um, you know, the system has been in decay and decadence ever since, basically. Then there was also this huge, huge um, truck lobby and bus lobby um, and, and very, very, well, not just strong, but like very aggressive unions. Um, and they did everything just basically to kill the, the railroad, uh, which they almost managed to do, I have to say. Well, that's the bus terminal. I mentioned that it's really, really close by. And well, this is the same abandoned train we saw when we were um, approaching the city in the previous video. Well, now we're leaving it and <laughs> we can see it again. Um, and well, I was talking about the trains. And so through all of those times, um, obviously the color scheme of the trains um, were changing constantly. Um, so that's why as you're traveling through the country, you can see that like the, the gray and green and the, 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 the blue and red and gray and some other colors. Currently, as you saw, they are um, sort of um, the reflection, I'd say, of, of the Argentinian flag, which is um, celestial blue and, um, and white and, and yellow. So it's, it's, it's nice. There are lots of new trains, both commuter trains, local, and uh, well, the very few long distance trains that they do have, they're all pretty new. Um, while the, obviously they're, it's, they're not running fa fast enough. So the, the distance of some, some like four, 400 something miles took us 21, 22 hours to make which is definitely not right, doesn't sound right. Not that I mind because like I said, it's, uh, it was a beautiful experience and you know, watching the views and, and uh, you know, drinking coffee or tea or uh, reading something or you know, just meditating and, uh, and just being was real, real, real fun and a real treat. So I can't complain really, I'm glad it took the many hours it, it did take, but um, technically speaking, obviously that's not right. That's not right. Well, that's one of those crossings, like I've mentioned before, pretty dangerous in this country. And um, this is the favorite part of all of the, of the four, <laughs> four part video that I made. Why? Because uh, we're gonna see the, the sunset the sunset, which is absolutely um, breathtaking. And um, I've, it, you know, it, we were just lucky because uh, we were um, in this semi-flooded area 
and there were all those reflections from the setting sun and uh, and the trees and it was surreal and just absolutely beautiful beautiful well we're still technically in Cordoba at this point we're still leaving the the city um, and then also I'll well I'll definitely tell you when but we're also going to ride by the Fiat factory where they produce vehicles here in Argentina um, well like I said before I'm not sure if you saw the previous video that Cordoba is one of the most uh, industrially developed and successful uh, provinces of Argentina so um, you can you can see that as you're uh, traveling through it that it's you know things are in place there's infrastructure there's um, there are farms and factories and um, every single you know village and little town or city um, they all look pretty pretty decent you know cute and, and clean and beautiful and also like I said it's much safer than in in the capital the capital is kind of on the wild side as far as the safety but here it's definitely way better. Well, here I am doing what I love most when I'm traveling by train, just looking through the window. Again, bye-bye Cordoba. It was great. It was a lovely day. It was actually like really, really, truly a beautiful day. It was some, like 70, 75, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, really, really, comfortable weather for walking around which I did and I had a I just had a backpack on me not too heavy but still um, had it been more you know had it been hotter definitely I wouldn't have seen as much as I did um, but I was lucky so it, it, it could all I mean it could have also been like rainy and and a little bit nasty because it, it was in fall April is the fall here in southern hemisphere so I was just lucky and a little bit sad <laughs> in this video because I really wanted to stay longer and also it just hit me that um, I was coming back to all of the problems I'd left behind and um, and you know going back to work and and just had to cut the uh, <laughs> the trip short um, which was unfortunate but I'm hoping to to come back one day and here we're back to this um, typical in this part of Argentina to the soul here you can see the birds flying faster than the train um, well I was saying that we can see you know the fields it's the fields it's it's the prairie it's some trees it's not too green it's not really uh, like the flat it's pretty flat in this part um, in this part of this province and in this part of this country so it's really like you can see the you know the horizon and, and this you know the skies and the clouds and all that but other than that there's not much going on landscape wise uh, as opposed to some other parts of Argentina especially uh, when it gets closer to the Andes or uh, to the coast where it's 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 more dramatic you know there's more character to to the landscape there are hills and, and mountains and lakes and rivers and, it's 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 a little bit less exciting in this part but nevertheless pretty in my opinion um, I will keep recommending you Argentina <laughs> because I just love this country so much and there's so much to see here and it's so diverse as far as the climates and the cultures um, it's such an amazing mix of um, European and, and Native American and um, and well there are lots of expats living here and working here and lots of influences. Well, Argentina was, it's, what I'm saying is not entirely scientific, but it's, it's um, based on, on my knowledge of it, of, of, of my research and on my experience of um, coming here a lot of times and now living here for just two years, is that Argentina, I would say, if you ask me, what is the country and the culture that influenced Argentina most? I would definitely say Ita uh, Italy, Italy, um, mentality-wise, even language-wise, because the Argentinian Spanish is um, heavily, heavily influenced um, phonetically and vocabulary-wise by the Italian language. Definitely, definitely. Um, 
so um, that also that, that that goes for a lot of different things uh, in the ever in you know day to day uh, customs and traditions and uh, the mentality the national mentality and all that. It's um, one of those um, I would say it's hard to just to put that in words and you know not sound anything you know with today you can't really say anything without offending anyone. Um, but truth be told, like Argentina and and Uruguay and to an extent Chile, they're very European. Well, I mean, quote unquote European uh, countries. There, they have a little bit less of that Latin vibe. And, you know, uh, if you're expecting something like super exotic, um, colonial-ish Latin American thingy going on with heavy Spanish influence then you should go, I'm in a dining car, by the way. Uh, I'm back to a dining car for a while. Uh, then you should definitely go to the north of the country, um, or to the extreme south, and where you can definitely see, um, you know, experience, and, and, and see a lot of the, of the uh, Native American cultures. Um, and um, it's definitely much more well, much more of that what I just mentioned, you know. So, um, and as far as cities and a great part of this country, it's going to give you, constantly give you this European vibe. And that's, you know, also the faces you see. It's, um, it's because, you know, people have their stereotypes when it comes to certain parts of the world and certain countries and you know, we ha we all have you know the celebrities, you know singers, you know movie stars that that have that certain Latin look. If you know what I'm saying, if you look at the Argentinian stars, even you would see you know a much more uh, European outlook, just ethnically speaking. It's just an observation. I'm not. It's neither good nor bad nor anything. It's just an observation. It's the reality. So. Um, I'm not saying it's not Latin American country or it's not a South American country. It is definitely a South American country, but um, it is of all the Latin American countries. This is one of the most influenced to this very day by the European culture. And architecturally, for instance, I keep going back to this, but it's important is that um, it's it's especially the city of Buenos Aires. It's definitely a, it's much. It looks much more like Paris than like, uh, I don't know, um, certain other places in the region, you know. Um, so, well, well, there's a reason why they call it the Paris of South America. It's not just a phrase, it's actually because it does look like this. It does have that vibe with all the arts and culture and Buenos Aires has. Um, it shares with New York and London. They are the three most important theater capitals in the world probably right now and as far as the number of theaters per capita. Also, Buenos Aires has the largest number, or one of the largest numbers of bookstores per capita. It's a, it's a, what they call a reading nation. It's a nation that is um, generally very well uh, educated, well, very well versed in uh, not only in their own uh, literature but, and, and, and arts, but also in the world. Um, literature, music, and theater, and, and cinema. They, they have a fantastic cinema of their own. Um, they, they got Oscars, and they got nominated for Oscars various times for Best Foreign Picture. So um, it's, such a, it's such an eclectic country, really. It's such a mix of practically everything you want, you will find here. Like I said, from the most exotic and, and South American to the most surprisingly European, but kind of still different because it's Argentina. So come, you know, come over and check it out for yourself. And know the, you know, the, the, uh, the secretary or the minister of tourism did not pay me to make this video. Uh, but really, it's just for the love that I have for this country and the appreciation I have for it through the years. And well, um, we're actually approaching the factory, the plant I mentioned to you, which is the Fiat uh, facility, production facility. That's it. Here we are. So all of that, all of that, all of this territory, it's um, it's it is that 
plant. It's the fiat plant. There you go. There you go. Fiat, yes. It's like a mini town, if you will. This uh, enormous, enormous territory with production facilities and uh, and all the infrastructure of of, the, of this production. So, um, just wanted to to show you that. And as you can see, it's all you know, very neat, very you know, well, neat is the word. <laughs> um, I actually I had seen it on the way to Cordoba so now that I'm coming back to Buenos Aires I decided to film it because I knew where to look for it well there you go we're crossing one of those small um, rivers one of the few rivers we crossed I think if not the only one on our way there you go well, the color of the water is really something I need to, to comment on because you might think, oh, it's dirty, it's contaminated. Well, not really. Well, I mean, in certain places, it definitely, it definitely is. But generally, this water is the, um, it's because of the minerals and elements and, um, and oxidizing metals in uh, at the bottom of the river and and at the at the shores so at the at the, the river banks so that gives the water that kind of um i don't know this 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 brownish or gingerish color it's not because it's ugh, it's dirty no for, for most for the most part it's really not well here's the the sunset i promised you didn't i so um, this is this area where I could never really truly figure out um, how the hell, I mean, how the hell uh, we, were, we were riding through this because it looks like we're just, we're, we've turned the train into a ship and we're just like sailing through this, this part. I don't know. All I know is that it's just very beautiful, isn't it? Oh, I really just love this part. I would imagine that sometimes the flooding is really so bad that probably the trains don't cannot run. Well, at least that's what I was told, but well, here it is. Here's your very magical, very surreal Argentinian sunset in the middle of nowhere between Cordoba and Buenos Aires. Enjoy. that's something special all those reflections oh my goodness it's like every time I'm, I'm watching this it's like I'm reliving uh, that trip and, and, and that that beauty that out of the worldness that that this is it was like a different planet I love it I'm just very happy that coincidentally we were just riding through this area exactly at sunset. It was just good luck. Well, for anyone who's filming or watching. Obviously we're going very slowly here because, well, because of the water, I think.
wow, this is like, <laughs> if some, maybe somebody knows like how the heck we went, you know, we managed to make, to make it through here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. If you, if you know, feel free to comment. I really have no idea. Once we left this flooded area, uh, we really sped up, so like you could see that, uh, yes, that we were finally going way, way faster than we are here. Oh, there you go. That's precisely what I was talking about. Finally, this is some kind of speed, I think 45, 50 mile an hour-ish. Still not that fast, but I mean way faster than, you know, the rest of it. Sun is still up, but almost, almost, almost there behind the horizon. Not sure when you're watching this, whether it's really a long time after the, the pandemic or uh, we're still in the middle of it or whatever it is, but um, doesn't that make you just want to travel? and just to go and explore one of those absolutely magical places on our, on our beautiful planet. And I know I'm sounding dramatic and, and, and corny, but it's true. It's just very beautiful and, 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 and inspiring. I just couldn't turn my camera off. I just kept filming. I was like, okay, that's enough. That's enough of, the, of that sun and that sky and those trees, but I just, I couldn't help myself. I had to film more. So that's probably the, the lengthiest segment of this video, which I think is absolutely worth it. It deserves it. That was a beautiful end of the day, and the following um, the following morning we were, we arrived in Buenos Aires, and that's something I'm going to show you in the the last um, part in the fourth chapter, <laughs> in the fourth episode of my um, video diary of this very short and very special trip. Um, that's going to be you know sort of. Um, uh, the, the, the outskirts and the suburbs of, Buen, of Greater Buenos Aires and then uh, approach and pulling in to the station. Well, here's the sun almost, almost down. It's, uh, it's really it's one of the best uh, remedies really for uh, <laughs> for a lot of things really to just get out of wherever it is your you are whatever it is wherever it is you live and just uh, discover something brand new even if it's it doesn't have to be too far from where you live um, well um, I have traveled in my opinion, I haven't traveled enough, and um, I, in my opinion, I have really traveled very little in life, but compared to a lot of the people I know and um, a lot of my, you know, classmates and childhood friends and uh, some other people I know, I realized um, talking to them really and, and sort of um, seeing my life reflected through their reaction to my stories is that I've actually been blessed to have traveled a lot and I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to traveling more when we all can. Um, I think it's one of, the, one of the best gifts that life uh, gives you is being able to, um, to really to explore, to see the world, 
to feel yourself part of something much bigger, to meet new people, um, to get new impressions, to feel inspired, to feel alive. Well, traveling, <laughs> come over here because it's not only these, you know, these gorgeous views and, and all of that, but it's also, it's uh, great people, very welcoming. Um, that, you know, Argentinians, they managed to somehow combine this, um, this you know, South American um, spirit, very warm, very welcoming, very um, affectionate, passionate, and at the same time, this kind of sophistication and something special that I can't even put in words, really. Argentina, I love Argentinians. Like, I really love them. And, well, the sun is gone, I guess, or practically gone. And I think that this is about the end of this, of this part of the video with, uh, uh, with a sunset. I hope you've enjoyed. I know it's not much in this video, really. Like in the previous video, you could see a little bit of the train and um, a lot of other things, and even the city of Cordoba. But uh, I hope you 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 haven't you're not regretting right now that you've that you've seen this sunset that I wanted to share with you all. This is something you can't really, uh, you can't really get when you're traveling by plane. <laughs> um, the you know traveling by plane is awesome, you know, and it, it it what it does best it takes you from point point A to point B uh, in record time, but uh, that's about it. Uh, but traveling by train, it's I I keep meant I keep saying it, it's very romantic. It's very. Uh, there's something, I don't know, something old school in this to really truly feel the, dif the distance that you've, that you've traveled. And uh, I know that you can also, I mean, obviously can drive through and Argentina is great for, you know, for, for uh, road trips. But in this case, the advantage is that you're not really in charge of anything. <laughs> you're not really... You don't have to to look, you know, to look at the road and be responsible and all that. So, well, the night has fallen, and here we are, uh, just making a stop at one of those small towns that we uh, that we stopped by. I think it was still the the province of Cordoba. We haven't, at that point, we hadn't really left the province yet. So here's Argentina by night. Beautiful. Even the very few buildings that you see, you know, there's this grandeur and, you know, things that really hint at that uh, golden age of that imperial <laughs> golden age of Argentina, at uh, the turn of the century, at uh, the previous one, that is. Well, as it is night, uh, and it is my tradition, the second video in a row, to leave you with just lights, shadows, and the sound of the train. And please come back for the last part of this video, number four, that it's coming, that is arrival in Buenos Aires. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. Thank you. God bless.